everyone. Welcome back to Spectrum Sundays, where we share all different perspectives about autism spectrum disorders and also about speech language pathologists. We would like to welcome Brittany Mark Colini, who has an extensive background with the Miss America organization and just recently graduated as a speech language pathologist. So congratulations. Thank you. Um, Thank our you. first question for you is, can you give us a brief resume of your experiences with the Miss America organization and your education in speech language pathology? Yeah, um, so just the briefest rundown I could give. Um, I used to be a title holder within the Miss Pennsylvania organization. Um, I then now have flipped to be one of two local directors for the Miss Laurel Highland Scholarship organiza Organization. So that's been wonderful to be able to get that broad spectrum of what the organization is about. It's a really cool thing. Um, when it comes to speech, I, as you said, recently graduated from Cal U. Um, I completed the program as a single mom. Uh, and then I also got a couple of awards while I was there. So for academics, presidential scholar. I also was given for my department for work in clinic and things like of that nature, the uh, Southwestern Pennsylvania Speech Language and Hearing Association Student Honorary Award. Um, so just a couple things that I'm really, really proud of because I worked really hard for them. Um, and now I'm just waiting out uh, to apply for the job that I'm looking for. So that's where I'm at. Well, congratulations. You have you. accomplished so much and we admire you for really sticking to this path and realizing that this is for you and you're going to do whatever it takes for it to become reality. So we are very excited to talk to you because of all of the intertwining involvement between Miss America and speech and it's also better hearing in speech month. So we wanted to ask what that means to you. What does better hearing in speech mean to you? I mean... There is a quote that was outside of my, one of my professor's doors, and it's by Daniel Webster. And it says, if all my possessions were taken from me, with one exception, I would choose to keep the power of communication, for by it I will soon regain all the rest. I think that quote in itself really holds a testament to how important communication is. I mean, and as a speech language pathologist, we treat three of the things that are just so essential to the human experience. So you have eating and thinking and communicating and the fact that we get to help people with those things is just, it's truly a blessing. And I think you can attest from working in clinic, like there's nothing that feels better than helping those people. Um, so just really understanding how important it is. I think even in now when we have social barriers, we can just get a small taste of how it feels to have some of that taken away and how important it truly is. So. You're absolutely right, yes. I actually love that quote. That's an amazing quote I've never heard of before. I'll Thank have to go back it. and listen again and write it down. It's <laughs> definitely empowering and it really does speak to what we do and how we award people who don't have a voice with a voice or with different ways to share their voice. Right. I right. love that. Well, so, thanks. You said that you recently graduated and added a few letters to your name now. <laughs> so can you describe the process of, from the beginning to end of becoming an SLP and what it's looked like for you and what are your next steps? Well, originally I, I decided I like, wanted to give something different a try. I was, I tip, I actually graduated um, with a different degree so I came back as a post-baccalaureate student um, and I just, I fell in love. And then I went into the master's program um, and I decided I was just gonna really hit it hard, learn as much as I can, be a sponge, soak in everything. And as I said, I just fell in love with it. Um, and now it's just, it's just a waiting game. It's hard right now with all the COVID stuff, trying to find the right next step. Uh, but. I think one of the things that I'm working on now is research. I think you can always like try and find something to do even when you're limited. Uh, so I did a research project and it's to develop a program uh, where I go and educate individuals who work in the restaurant service industry on communication disabilities, what those look like and how to better approach individuals who have 
communication disabilities. So that's kind of what I'm doing right now in my little project that I'm working on. So. Well, thank you for your work in that because we speak a lot to that, how many people don't really understand the barriers that come with communication disorders. Right. So the work that you do simply in the restaurant industry is going to help a ripple effect later on for other people to consider different accommodations, which we can't wait to talk to you more about later on. But I wanted to kind of go back to how many young people have this idea that success is very linear and there's one path to success. And we know that that is not necessarily the case. For me personally, I can speak to that because I did take some time off between my undergrad career and my graduate program. And for a while there, I was like, is this even the right path for me? Is this going to happen for me? And I questioned it a lot because I wasn't on that linear path. So what kind of advice can you share about creating your own path to success since you've kind of lived that yourself? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm living proof that you don't have to necessarily follow those exact steps. Um, and there are times, I'm right there with you, there are times when I was completing the graduate program where I would just cry and I'm like, I should be ahead, I should be further on. And then I had to remind myself that no, everything that I have done in my life has led me to here. Everything that I have done has prepared me to be more success successful while I'm here. So there's no right or wrong way to go about things. You could be 22 and graduate, or you can be 40 and graduate, or 30. It doesn't matter, you know, as long as you're following your own path. I don't know who said there's one right or wrong way, but, but they're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think young people were, were constantly infiltrated with this idea that there's one way to do it. College is always the answer and you have to do it right after high school. And then you have to go straight into your professional degree to then actually be a working professional and do it well. So I, I love speaking with other people who have this experience because it really shares that it, it's okay to take time to figure it out. And you kind of talked about how your undergrad degree was in something different. Mm -hmm. So you never know when you're going to fall into this knowing that your passion is something different than what you have previously lived. And you right. can still do something to make that a reality for yourself and so that you can be living your truth and use that to help others. So I Absolutely. love that story so much. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, you know what? It's funny because that undergraduate degree still helped me because it was in, it was technically in music. So you think about, oh, me too. That's yeah, really funny. yeah. And then of course I'm a mom and having that perspective has helped me when it comes to speech. Yeah. So, I mean, you never know where life's going to take you, but I think, especially as speech language pathologist, you think of clinic, you think of just any aspect of life. You just have to learn to roll with the punches and just yeah. kind of go with it and keep pushing. So yeah, and I'm really glad that you talked about how you can have multiple passions within speech pathology because I started out the same exact way. I love um, music, and that's what brought me into it because of singing um, science. And then also I love autism, and I wanted to learn more about the community. And I'm actually going to be shifting gears a little bit and asking you a little bit more about the autism community because Megan and I are advocates within the Miss America organization for autism. Right. And so I would like to know a little bit more about what your involvement has been with individuals or families who are on the spectrum, either in your personal life or as a clinician. Well, not necessarily my personal life. In my personal life, uh, there is somebody who I'm close to that has Down syndrome. Um, but I did work, uh, or extern, I should say, at the Pathfinder School here in Pittsburgh. And my classrooms were um, autism support. Or autistic support and going into it I still was a little bit novice whenever it came to you know individuals with autism and I worked with some you know very they were more on the severe end of the spectrum and I just fell in love with working with them and it really I, I don't know I just I if I can get in a school for disabilities that you know, kind of where I'm wanting to go, but if there's not an opening, you know, that's okay. Um, but I just, I think that's another thing that really drove me to do my research is because I feel that 
people can't necessarily accept what they don't understand. And I think there's this veil of fear Mm -hmm. because it's just so unknown. It's unpredictable. Everyone is different. Every individual with autism is different and unique. And I think that if you just give a little preface as to some things you might see and maybe how to handle it, I just, I think that, you know, it'll help make everyone more comfortable. And I don't know. That's just... No, that's beautiful. Really. Yeah, and I, and that's I, exactly what we teach. Go ahead. Right. I really appreciate that you talk about this unknown. If you, if you haven't had an experience with it, how can you really hold someone accountable for having different ideas when really. they are not able to ho- have an open mind since they're just kind of ignorant to what it actually is? And I say right. ignorant in the most positive way possible. I don't mean that in a negative way, but Um, Francesca and I talk a lot about that being that we don't have autism. So what is our place in being advocates for them? But we think that there's something really valuable about that because we can then turn and get other people in on the conversation who typically never would have even considered it in the first. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's, that's a perfect statement um, to go along with that. It's whenever you advocate for anything else, you don't necessarily have to be a member or you don't necessarily have to experience it, but you can help give other people a voice within your own circles and communities. And it doesn't mean you're speaking for them. You just, you know, you can do it in a way where you're not, you know, overstepping. Absolutely. It's important too. Kind of going back to what you said about making accommodations for people, what type of general accommodations can people make to help individuals feel more comfortable or to feel equal either in education or just in their communities? How to make them feel equal. I mean, I might just go back to this and use this just because it's just an example that sticks out in my mind. Um, I, I said, I also worked, I worked in a restaurant myself and we had a guest for our family and their boy, their child had autism. And uh, the way it worked in the restaurant, we had a server and a server assistant. So I was the server and my assistant was like, I don't know what to do. And I'm like, why? <laughs> She's like, I, how do I talk to him? I said, talk to him like you would any other human being, you know? <laughs> and it's just, it's, it's hard to explain exactly how to, but it's just treating people like humans. You know, it's just looking at them and saying, you know, what do they need? Not just thinking about what you need, but what they need. Sometimes it's, you might be uncomfortable, but you have to think like if you're uncomfortable about what's happening, what are they going through? You know, and it's thinking of other people. Absolutely. (laughs) Yeah. I love that. And just stripping away any fear or misconceptions that we need because they were just seeing this person surface level. Yeah, absolutely. To see them as a person and deeper. So we have one last question for you today. How are you planning to celebrate your graduation with social distancing? Okay, well, I did have one thing. Um, We did have a Zoom graduation for my class, but um, I had just, you know, my family that I live with and my best friend sent me a little trophy so oh I love that it's <laughs> most extra it's not it's, wrong it's the baton twirler, it's the baton twirler. <laughs> yeah so <laughs> that's amazing so I kept this right here because I was like I, I have to show it off because it's, it's very accurate but I just think it's just going to be kind of relaxing a little bit before I jump into anything too crazy because it's, as I said, there's been a lot on my plate. It's been a whirlwind. Um, so I just think a little downtime is what I need. <laughs> and you totally deserve it. Yes. Congratulations. Well, thank that, you. That is all the time we have. Thank you so much. for. Well, thank you for here. having me. Yes, we really appreciate it. And we hope that all of our viewers have enjoyed it as well. We know that we did. I have felt very empowered through this conversation. So thank you. And thank you everyone for tuning in and watching watching Spectrum Sundays. We will be back next Sunday at one o'clock. Thank you, Brittany. Thank you.